Good evening, everyone. I wanted to answer three questions tonight. I'm going to try to keep this tight as I've got my, my families here for a couple days to see our new kiddo. I was born a couple weeks back and I uh, wanted to spend some time with them tonight. So um, we'll keep it quick. First, though, I need to ask you guys a question. So um, we're getting anywhere from like six to 600 to 1,000 views in each of these videos right now. And I just want to see, you know, what your guys' feedback is. So if it works for you, if it doesn't, um, how you'd like to structure it differently, um, what things I could bring in. If you'd like to see other guests on this, guests on this would be a little more challenging, but I'd like to try to do like maybe one guest a week. We'll see. Um, and uh, anyway, give me a, a thumbs up. Give me a like. Give me a comment below. Um, go ahead and reach out personally, share, and uh, let me know what you guys think. So, all right, let's dive into the questions. So the first question is from Show. Shlomo Silverman, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but um, we are just getting started out on this venture and make value decisions constantly. Has anyone gotten a report on this cedar? It appears it might be a good value for a beginner. It might be mounted to a walk-behind tractor. Um, it's the uh, basically a three-row earthway garden cedar. So they basically take three earthway cedars and push them together and uh, sell it for another $60 more than just buying them individually and doing it yourself. So um, first thing, you know, an earthway cedar is... A great little cedar. I mean, it's a hundred bucks. It's got a, there's a lot going for it. There's a lot that is not going for it as well. So there's a lot of challenges. I mean, it's a hundred dollar cedar. So what more can you ask for it? So one thing we've done with ours is we've, and I don't have the plates here in the office. They're actually upstairs, but, um, we've actually taken multiples of each plate and we've actually cut them down or we'll tape over them so we can adjust the amount of seed going out of them. So for our beet plate, we actually have three or four different beet plates that are all filed down at different levels, which allow us to um, use them differently. So we have probably 12 or 15 different plates in total for the Earthway, and um, it's a great little cedar. But again, Jang is a uh, you know three to four times the cost, and it's three to four times the cedar. And um, there's always a place for the six row and the four row as well. So um, putting the three rows together for the Earthway, um, I feel is a little bit of a challenge. Um, the first thing is that, especially because you're using the Earthway usually in a very low tech situation, you don't have perfectly flat beds, um, is those three rows are solid like this. And so when your bed top is like this, the outer two rows are going to be, you know, you're going to rock back and forth and those outer two rows are not going to quite cover as well as you'd like. Trust me, I've got experience. Um, and the whole thing getting the seed out there too. So getting the seed out of the, the hoppers as well. Sometimes you have to use a little hand vac or something, but it's something you have to think about. So I wouldn't recommend it. If you are going to use an Earthway, I'll stick with a single row. If you're going to go for multi rows, I would move up to a, a different seeder. So, all right, let's jump on to the next question here. The next question is from Jason. And Jason asks, my firm is certified organic. Um, da, 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 da. I see a, one of the, the reasons for doing so is to verify that the farm is actually producing what he claims to produce. I know there's a problem here. It seems odd to me, though. Is passing off someone else's goods as their own a problem everywhere? Uh, great question. And as long as I've you know been a farmer and been the farmer's markets, there's always been that one or two person that's been reselling and um, you know sneaking product in. We were in upstate New York and there was always those growers that were going down to the Albany market and buying a few cases of this and buying a few cases of that um, and, and bringing it and selling it. And it's not good. No, it's not. I mean, the misrepresentation, um, most of the markets we were going to were producer only. Now, do I think there's a place for buying of the product? Absolutely. And do I think that it's a great idea for farmers? Absolutely. So, um, you know, I think there's a place in time, obviously, if you say, hey, look, this is not my product. This is buying from X farm or from X market, and we're just selling it to increase our offerings. I think it's a great way for farmers to have more products, especially in a smaller market where there's not as many vendors and some of that product is needed. So obviously a place for that, but you need to label it. it needs to know where it came from, what quality it is, if it's certified or not. But it is a huge problem. There is people that need to be held accountable for that. And um, sometimes midnight uh, checking in the cooler is, uh, is, is, is what it's called for. And I know that cooler New York City Green Market has had significant problems with that. So um, anyway, that's my take on that. 